In this video, we're going to be talking at a very high level about some of the main compute services that AWS offers. And the first is EC2, which was the very first compute service offered by AWS. And at a very high level, EC2 instances are virtual instances that you can manage in AWS and that are highly configurable on your end. So you can choose all kinds of different features for these EC2 instances, such as the amount of RAM, the amount of CPU, um, how much storage you want it to have, what kind of operating system it runs, and many other features as well. And because all of that is managed on your end, EC2 is one of the most flexible options out there for AWS Compute. LightSail is similar to EC2 in that you're getting a virtual instance, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. So EC2 is for people who know how to provision and configure servers. LightSail is for people who may or may not know how to do that, but simply don't want to do it or don't have the time. LightSail takes a lot of that functionality and puts it behind the scenes so that you can make a couple of easy, quick decisions and have a server up and running in no time. ECS, or Amazon Elastic Container Service, is a highly scalable, high-performance container orchestration service that supports a Docker and is built on EC2. So if you're going to be provisioning your own servers but you use a lot of Docker instances, ECS is probably where you're going to find yourself. EKS, or Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, is a highly available, scalable, and secure Kubernetes service. So this is where you're going to end up if you find yourself using Kubernetes a lot. AWS Lambda is a little bit different from the others. It lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. You pay only for the compute time you consume. There's no charge when your code is not running. With Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of application or backend service with zero administration. All you have to do is upload your code and Lambda takes care of just about everything required to run and scale your code with high availability. You can set up your code to automatically trigger from other AWS services or call it directly from any web or mobile app. And finally, there's Elastic Beanstalk. At a very high level, Elastic Beanstalk is an easy-to-use service for deploying and scaling web applications and services developed with a whole lot of backend languages, including Python, Node.js, .NET, and more. If you need a service or a web application up and running in no time, and you don't want to have to take care of a lot of the manual configuration, then Elastic Beanstalk is where you want to go. And now, at a very high level, I'd like to talk about some of the storage fundamentals that AWS offers. First off, there's EPS, or Elastic Block Store. And Elastic Block Store is a storage volume that you can attach to EC2 instances when you create an EC2 instance. It makes it very easy to decide exactly how much storage you want on any particular instance. And EBS also makes it very easy to create snapshots of your instances and then create clones of those instances later on if you need to. Next is S3, or Simple Storage Service. We'll definitely be spending a lot more time on S3 in the future, but for now, just know that S3 is a very popular and highly scalable object storage service um, that makes it really easy to pull and dump objects from many other services in AWS, as well as just about anywhere else in the world. Next is EFS, or Elastic File System, which is highly scalable elastic file storage that you can mount right on your EC2 instances if you'd like. And then finally, there's Glacier, uh, which offers object storage similar to S3, except it's built for more long-term storage. So Glacier is perfect for you if you don't need immediate access to your objects and you're just looking for the most affordable way to store data long-term.